Hey there guys, happy um, Friday, January 19th. Hope you're doing well. Keeping warm, safe, dry, cool, wherever you are in the world. I know it's crazy out there. Um, I'm on for a few minutes tonight. I'm gonna do some sketching, I think. I have, I think I'm gonna do something inspired by St. Patrick's Cathedral. So let me check in, see who is tuning in, say hello, and then we'll get sketching. Um, Hey, D-Ray, good to see you. D-Ray says, what be doing? Be doing a sketch of, uh, of St. Patrick's Cathedral. This is why I do not teach language arts. I have not mastered the art of speaking. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be sketching an interior shot. And what gave me the idea was this here. This was a sketch uh, inspired by the Biltmore and it had kind of these Gothic arches happening and i'll show you the picture of saint patrick's i'm going to bring it on screen hey linda s is in the house how the heck are you the s stands for spectacular it's uh so great to see you so let's bring this on screen um here's an interior shot of saint patrick's cathedral mid midtown manhattan new york city an incredible incredible amazing beautiful structure. I have a lot of pictures inside and I just picked this one for tonight. So our sketch is going to be really loosely based upon this. Um, so let's have fun and do some sketching. If you haven't been to St. Patrick's, it's, I know I said it before, but it is gorgeous and incredible building. Um, happy Friday. Thank you. It, I was at St. Pat's. Beautiful. Yeah. Let me show you some other images, guys. Good sketching. So Linda, I'm so glad you were there. Um, let's see. Here's some really, here's a really cool perspective shot. Like it, like it. I have to say there, there is one thing I don't like about the interior. And I'm wondering if there was a better solution. Can you guys guess what is something, just look at this picture. What is something you feel like does not belong? on the interior. Let me know in the chat. We're doing a little uh, little arc of speak before we do some sketching. Why not, right? Oh wow, that's going to be awesome sketch. Uh, yeah, it should be fun to work on. So yeah, let me know. What do you think? What is something maybe you that kind of pops out is not really belonging? Hey, Donna's now. Donna, great to see you. Yeah, Donnie, you got it. Um, so these black, I don't, I'm guessing these are speakers. If they're not speakers, there's some kind of monitors, like TVs maybe to um, show the verse There's that's being sung, I'm not sure. So speakers or monitors, they really, I kind of wish they had a better architectural solution than uh, those back, big black, panels. But anyway, I'm being a little crit critical. Um, let's see, I'm going to look see if I can find another image and we'll get sketching. Uh, actually, here's a close-up of those. Here, show it. So, it looks like they're monitors or TV screens, just based on the glare and the reflection in the picture. Kind of ugly, right? Hey, Jason is in the house. Great to see you. I hope it's all Hope all is well. The far right window. Yeah, so for I was it was a speaker. So I'll show you one more image. Like I said, I could spend an hour just showing you pictures of this building. When I went, I was really lucky. It was very uh, empty inside. I love, love, love this view. This is such. You know what? Let's go for this sketch tonight. I'm gonna use this as inspo. Why the heck not, right? Um, this is just a really magnificent viewpoint. Look at those arches. Look at the stained glass windows. It's, I can't do it justice. All right, let's shrink it down. I'm going to be brave and leave it on screen. Usually I turn off the pictures. Only because people tune in and they're expecting me to sketch exactly what the picture is showing. That's not how I roll. It's just there for inspo. All right, guys. 
Those are monitors to watch what you are doing. Security. Oh. Interesting. That would be... That could be what they're for. I love the... That the design of the columns look like trees. Oh. Yeah, right? It's almost like being in a forest. Um, check out... In Barcelona, Google La Familia Sagrada. La Familia Sagrada. Google the building. Um, designed by Antoni Gaudi. Been under construction for over a hundred years. Slated to be finished in 2026, 20, I believe. Check out the interior. Well, the ex they're both beautiful, but check out the interior. It really has a forest like feeling in it. So cool. All right, guys, I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm sorry. I should be sketching. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> All right. I, um, let's just go for it. Get some music here. Just gonna start with a sharpie. See where, see where it goes. by no means an easy uh, easy interior to sketch and that's why I'm sketching it just want to see what I can capture in a few minutes I'm gonna force myself to be really quick with this See if we can do it some kind of justice. So let's talk um, creative mindset a little bit. I hope you guys are up for that. So right now, this is uh, inspired life. I like to ink out loud or think out loud with you guys. Uh, my brain is too focused on the photograph. And you heard me right, I did say I'm too focused on the photograph that I'm sketching. And it's really not making me feel loose when I'm sketching this. I'm feeling kind of really uptight mentally, and that mental uptightness is going down to my hand. And it's really not as loose and quick and fun. That's kind of, that's the thing. I'm not feeling fun sketching this. I'm feeling like it's a chore. And for creative mindset, for me personally, I never want to feel like it's a chore I'm doing. This is my my fun downtime. This is, uh, you know, my passion. And why am I feeling that way? Because I keep I was kind of um, putting in my brain, and you heard me say it, how difficult this is to sketch. And once I start putting that into my mind, it's like, all right, you're not going to get this right no matter what you do. So self-talk is a really important um, thing, whether it's creating art piece or whatever, anything in life, but how the words that you say to yourself can be very powerful. They could put you in a positive state, a negative state, a tired state, an energetic state. So just kind of watch the words that you're using when you're talking to yourself. Get a little deep here, but a lot of what I do is, a lot of it has to do with creative mindset skills and I just want to kind of share what I'm thinking with you guys um, I'm not hating it but I'm not loving it right now but I'm gonna keep working on it we'll see what happens another thing I usually will do before I start a sketch is I'll set a, an intention some kind of mental intention like, what is my result? What am I looking to do? You know, am I just going to play with color on this? Am I going to focus on maybe the columns and see how I can capture the idea of a column? Is that going to be the perspective? So sometimes before I start a piece, I'll put that in my brain. Like, where where do I want to head with this? 
Um, and I didn't do any intentions tonight either. So hopefully that makes sense. Hope you guys are cool with kind of the mental, the mindset part of creating. It's not always just about the technical. It's, it's about how we're thinking and how we're approaching our artwork. So now I'm actually starting to feel a little bit looser. I'm going, for me, quicker speed, lots of times equals looser, um, more flowing type of sketching. And that's my vibe. Kind of, kind of liking it now. Creative mindset, yeah, thinking outlook right now. That's right. Thank you, D Ray, for kind of paraphrasing me. Hey, Janice is in the house. Janice, how are you? Oh my gosh. Long time no see. Janice and I, um, we, we were chat buddies back, back on The Urbanist. Um, check out Ariel, The Urbanist, on YouTube. He's awesome. But, uh, I know Janice was in the chat there, and I think we would say hello in the chat. So it's great to see you in here. It's been a while. Deep breath. Yeah. Something you could definitely do. So those of you guys that have taken workshops, like Linda, um, we talked about deep breaths. We talked about an exercise I like to do sometimes is I'll close my eyes. I call them med inktations. Med inktation. Take a blank piece of paper, close your eyes and a minute or two, listen to music and just kind of, you can see my hand, my eyes are closed, my hands just moving. It kind of just frees you, puts you in a, um, a clear mindset, a blank slate kind of mindset. So you can do exercises like that. Good point. You guys are awesome. Every sketch painting has an ugly stage. Yeah, you have to work through it. Yep. So I've talked about that. I call that the ugly duckling syndrome. Every, every work of art has, every creation has an ugly, ugly duckling syndrome. So that's awesome that you said that. I always, <clears throat> excuse me. I often talk about Bob Ross. And when I was a kid, I'm still a kid at heart. Um, but when I was uh, growing up, I would watch Bob Ross on PBS religiously. And for me, Bob Ross always had that moment where his painting just transformed in an instant. It went from the ugly duck to a beautiful swan or whatever birds you like. Um, yeah, so be patient. There are the ugly duckling stages of of artwork. You guys are awesome. I'm loving the chat and the sketching tonight. Alright, I'm, I'm adding elements. It's coming. It's cool. I'm, I'm happy with it, guys. It's, I'm enjoying it. You know, this mindset stuff really also applies to what I like to call um, blank paper syndrome. You know, We'll look at paper, a sheet of paper sometimes and not know where to start with our drawing or painting. And a lot of that goes back to mental and creative mindset. Um, you'll hear more about my mental mindset stuff, creative mindset. I'm, I'm working on that uh, constantly and I want to share it with you guys. Um, and I'm going to turn what I do into creative coaching. I'd like to be a creativity coach and help creatives like you guys, myself, to kind of break some of those barriers like blank paper syndrome or uh, being frustrated with your work, um, comparison trap, you know, comparing your work to others can, can really freeze you up. So, cool. All right, we got some ink on. I liked, I'm actually liking the really looseness. Let's have fun and throw some color down. And I use the word throw color down because we're literally going to throw it down. I'm not even going to really think. I have my watercolor paint here. Uh, I have some ink here. I'm going to open it up. We're just going to grab and go and paint and sketch and we'll see what happens. I have a red pen. Let's just be really playful. So now I'm setting an intention. What I want to do. My intention is to be really fun, fast, loose. Throw color down. So our intention is to throw color down. Cool. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Let me know if, if I'm getting too deep with the mindset stuff.
Here's something I haven't done in a while. I haven't used a um, Red Pilot Precise Pen. Let's throw some red on here. And I really like, I like bleeding this Red Pilot Pen. I love the red color it gives. Um, I, sometimes I like using it more than like red watercolor. Let's do it. Let's just bleed some. This is just a red pilot precise pen, a V7. I, I love, let me zoom in. This is what I'm loving. You, you probably, did you guys notice like a change in my voice? I'm like, I am pumped now. Just throwing this color down. Just brought me to a whole different place. I love this color, what's happening with red. I'm just gonna use turquoise watercolor, but I'm actually gonna let's use our varsity pilot varsity. And D Ray, I think this is what you had used in the on your onion dome. You did was it the pilot varsity? Um, I loved, I really loved that that painting you did. It was very very cool. And if I remember, I think you did bleed some of this this ink on there. Oh yeah, look at that. I actually did, I also, I actually just, see now I'm excited, I really can't talk. Um, I did something, I don't know what they call it in watercolor or mixed media, I call it bridging. Um, I just bridged two colors together, this apple snail color and the blue. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's just do it over, um, do it here. I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm gonna throw down some of this turquoise and I'm gonna bridge the two colors. And what I mean is just take my paintbrush, it's got water on it, and I'm literally just gonna kind of dab where the two colors were close to each other and let them mix on the paper. So I just call that bridging. Because in my brain it's like, we're connecting the pieces together with the water, which is like a bridge. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, this is fun, guys. I'm really, this is cool. And then I'll come back after it dries like I always do. I'll throw down some details and you're, you're here for the journey. So you'll, you'll see how it ends up, whether I finish it tonight or not, I'll definitely post the finish. Hey, Becky, it's good to see you. Uh, Becky says you made a nitty, oh, a nifty, sorry, a nifty green. Yeah, look at that, right? Got some nifty greens happening. Also, do you did you guys see something? So this is inside St. Patrick's, right? Am I yelling? Sorry, if I'm yelling, the music's too loud. Um, or I'm just getting old. I, I'm seeing a cross shape. Does anybody else see a cross here happening? That was totally not planned. But my brain's saying there's a cross here happening. So it's really cool. Um, you know what? We're really, we're doing a lot of different things. I'm going to grab a yellow Sharpie highlighter. With smear guard. Let's see actually, let's see how the smear guard works. Because we're going to throw some highlighter on here. I was going to dip into the watercolor paint, but let's go with this instead. And I, I, actually, I actually want to see if I can bleed some of this yellow. I 
Right, I'm just throwing some water on here. Let's see if this bleeds. So it is, it is bleeding with water. I guess it, it didn't dry long enough, and that's cool. So you can bleed these highlighters while they're still wet, I guess. Uh, let me zoom out. We're really throwing a lot here. So we have some highlighter happening. Um, also, have this out. Got a preppy. I love the preppy yellow in here. It's such a great color. But I love the color even more right out of the tube. It's more vibrant. So we have some yellow. It's actually going to look orange. And uh, we're going to just splatter some on here. We'll zoom in and I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to check out that color. Pretty awesome, right? So that's the preppy pen. This is the preppy yellow. To me, it has a yellow orange ish, orange -ish color. I do have to be careful not to color in too much. I want to leave a lot of white space on this. Kind of balance the color out. Pretty cool. What are you guys, you guys liking this one? All right. Let's see. I'm missing some comments. Sorry if I missed your comments. Janice says, oh, I see now Cathedral. Yeah, so Janice, this is... um." inside St. Patrick's. This is roughly using this photograph as a starting point, an inspo point. Obviously St. Patrick's is not this vibrant inside. It is very elegant, ethereal building inside. Um, ba -ba -ba paper has an interesting texture. So Becky, this paper is right here. This is the Fa this is Fabriano 1264 watercolor. Um, I'm really loving the Fabriano. I'm using it a lot these days. So you can see the texture here if I kind of do this. So yeah, I do like this paper. I love it for these quick sketches here. You can see kind of here how it skipped here in these white spots. Hopefully that makes sense. Great comments, guys. Thank you guys for joining. Um, I appreciate all you say and all your feedback, so thank you. D-Ray says, yes, varsity. All right, cool, so it was the varsity pen. Yep, and that's the blue I just threw down. Uh, let's try something with the varsity. We have the varsity and then we have the preppies. Um, I have a dark blue preppy. No, actually, yeah, let's try that. I just want to see how well this bleeds on a wet, damp area, just by tapping on it. So I'm just tapping the Varsity pen down. I'm going to tap it down here also. So the Varsity pens really bleed nice in a wet area. I think they bleed better than a preppy pen. Try the same thing. I don't know if this one, is this one even working? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. So if you want to use like bleed these types of pens in wet areas, um, I think the Varsity does a better job than the preppy. I always feel like I'm in college when I talk about varsity pens and preppy pens. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. I'm just going to bleed this a little bit. Mix those up. Cool. Hope you guys are liking this one. Um, it's really going to come together even more when I start adding some, just some details with a Sharpie on, on top of it. Um... 
Oh wait, did we miss a birthday? Becky, happy belated birthday to you. Guys, let's give some thumbs up or some hearts out there in the chat. Um, looks like Becky, happy, happy belated birthday to you. That's so awesome. Very cool. I hope you had some delicious cake or a cupcakes or something. All right, let's go. Um, I actually brought out my graphite stick. Let's use the graphite on here a little bit. Just to give some dark areas. I could do it with black ink. I can mix some shadow colors with my watercolor paints here. If I was going to mix shadow colors, I like to take blue and brown to mix my shadows. You can kind of see in here. But we're just going to throw down some graphite tonight. It's just, we're going to throw it right down on paper and we'll wet it. This is water soluble so we can wet it and move it around and stuff. Read that, might be blurry. And I am, I am also using dirty water. I haven't changed this in about two weeks. And I just, I like the aesthetic of the dirty water. dip this in water and just kind of sketch paint with it. So Becky was talking about texture of the paper. I'll zoom in, you can see. One of the things I really like about using graphite sticks is they're really awesome at picking up the texture of the paper. And you can really see here what's happening. Well, you can even see here in the wet area, right? See how that graphite's picking up the texture here also. I like the way this is coming together. It might look a little crazy and busy, but that's fun. It's fun. Maybe it's a reminder that um, sometimes life is crazy and busy. And we can go, if we need a quiet moment, we could step into a structure like St. Patrick's Cathedral and slow down and reflect on things. See, see what I just did there? Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Hope you're getting some Getting something out of what I'm doing tonight. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, the cross. So, D Ray, you do see the cross. Very cool. I'm probably way behind, behind on the chat. You have a lot of bright colors going on there tonight. Yeah, Linda H., great to see you. Welcome, Linda H. I do. I do. One of my intentions was just to throw down color and have fun. Um, we're going to throw down some dark blue now. Good observation. Texture must be good. It's showing on the camera. Yes. That, that was for dramatic effect. Did it work? Let's try it again. Yes. All right. That was, that was my uh, drama for night. The night. I love when you guys say hello to each other. You're awesome. Love your granite work. Awesome. Whoever's doing granite work, it must be pretty awesome. All right, let's throw it down. I feel like I need some cool colors on here. We're going to cool this down. We're just going to throw down some blue preppy here. I did not, I did not preppy. I did not prepare for it tonight. I have to be honest with you, I rarely, I, I rarely prepare for um, coming online. 
other than I will have usually an idea or photograph of what I want to do lately. Other than that, I just kind of just going with it. If I was to prepare for these shows, I would feel like it's work. And I don't want to take, I just don't want that feeling to happen. It's, it's meant to be fun, spontaneous, loose, out of the box. That's another reason I don't really have a fixed schedule. Um, Cause then I'm not stressing like, oh yeah, I gotta be on t tonight at nine o'clock. What am I gonna do? Um, if I, what if I'm really tired? I'm like, oh, I gotta go on. I'm really tired. Um, check out the blue. I'm I'm loving this blue preppy, and I really am loving the the blue contrasting with these more vibrant colors. It's kind of bringing them down a little bit. I think I feel like we need something up here also. I'll throw some in here. frame there a little bit sorry I'm just throwing some over here this is kind of what I was talking about with the, the preppies I'm trying to re sketch or add ink on the wet area it's not really coming out so well I have a dark, I do, I have a dark blue varsity here. Let's see how that works. Yeah, so this is working better for me. What I'm really amazed at is I haven't used these in a long time. <laughs> and they're actually kind of working right out of the box, so to speak. They're not all dried up and stuff, so that's a good sign also. Graphite work, graphite work. Thank you. Got it. Nice blue and orange. Yeah. Thanks. This is a cool color combo happening. They work really well next to each other. This is so fun. I think I'm getting to a point where definitely have enough different colors but I think I'm getting to a point where I want this to dry so I can start adding some details on Oop, I smeared it here a little bit tight it's, it's all right we can just cut this off if we need to all right let's let this dry for a second do a quick recap of all the stuff that was used on here In no particular order, we threw down some of our preppy yellow. I'm gonna throw some more down. Why not? Um, so we have some preppy yellow. Get the spy music on. Uh, one of the things I will say about preppy pens is the barrels crack really easily. You can see a crack right here. Maybe. Um, so I can't tighten this. Okay, so the barrel doesn't stay on the pen. So be careful with preppies. They do crack pretty easily. We used a preppy. We had our turquoise varsity. Which 
should put the lineup. Do a lineup here. Here, let's do a lineup here. Um, dark, right? So maybe just regular blue varsity. We also had a blue preppy. One of my faves is a pilot precise. Um, I love the black pens for sketching. I love the red pens for sketching and painting. We use Sharpie highlighter. Holy moly. Of course, started with a Sharpie as usual. Graphite stick. Um, brush. No watercolor, so we did not throw any watercolor down tonight. We close that up. I think that's... Oh no, we also did throw down... Uh, some ink. So a lot of stuff is on this one sheet of paper. We don't want prep. We like those loose, non-stressing visits. Thanks, D-Ray. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's kind of how I roll. I agree. I see Joan Saramala just joined us on Instagram. Welcome, Joan. Hope all is well. Uh, this time of night, I'm lucky it can I can spell anything. You're right, you're funny. So this is what we use so far, guys. And maybe went a little overboard. But it was a what did I say? We we're gonna throw down some color and play around with some different pens. That's exactly what happened. Um very cool. I do want to throw some more ink down as I'm looking at this. Becky says, I am terrible at spelling. Becky, I hate to break it to you, man, but you actually spelled that sentence correctly. So kudos to you. Um, and if you, I'm looking at the microphone, like it's actually looking back at me. Very strange. Um, dry time. We're going to let it dry a little bit and then we're going to throw down some ink. So if you guys want to stick around till like 9, I'm going to be on till 9.30. I'm going to wrap at 9.30, 9.30. I just want to liven up some of these areas in here. Again, we don't want to get too cray cray, so I think I'll stop with that. We'll throw down some ink. And we're going to change the music playlist in a second. Janice says, nice. I like it. Guys, if Janice likes it, we're in good shape. Janice, how, um, how much snow did you guys get by you? I was watching... Um, CFOT tonight or earlier today so I saw it was you had some snow over there in NYC playing with color is always fun yes it is Linda guys you know what would be fun right now throw down throw down in the chat can't throw it down could try in the chat just let me know what are your favorite colors what are some of your favorite colors I would love to know from you guys. Throw it down in the chat. Um, yeah, it'd be just fun for me to see. All right, I'm gonna switch up the playlist a little bit. We're just gonna click on the one that says jazz. I'm gonna throw down some of this highlighter just to brighten it up. You know what I didn't break out yet? I'm sure you guys all know. What didn't we break out yet? Let's uh running out of room. Let's throw this here. I'm gonna close this image. Ta-da! Talking to one of my students today about color pencils, and we were both were agreeing how um Prisma colors make kick butt, kick butt colored pencils. I'm gonna sharpen this. Sorry guys, the sharpener is gonna go on. By the way, I'm gonna plug this sharpener. Um, 
just because I like it. I've had this, I don't know, six years. Never had an issue with it. It's really awesome. The sharpening colored pencils. Um, this pulls off here. You can dump it out. Batteries seem to last a long time also. Pretty good pencil sharpener. Uh, if you go to my website, inspiredlife.com or theinspiredlife.com, you'll see a, a page in there of all the things I like to use. I need to update it. Um, and I think there's a link for that sharpener on there. If, you, if you're interested and you went to the link, it would take you to Amazon. And if you bought it, I would probably get through my link. It's the same price, whether you use my link or not. And I think I get like two cents if, if anybody buys anything using my Amazon links. Um, and like I said, the price is the same, whether you did it on your own or you use my link, there, it doesn't change. Sorry, just a little, little plug there. All right, so I'm throwing down the pink. Usually I only throw it down in three places. Like if we look at the uh, copper building. One, two, three. I wasn't even thinking, I'm just, I threw it down in one, two, three, four, five places. I'm, I'm really, really living on the edge. You caught me at a good, on a good night tonight. We'll throw that down. This will be a fun picture to take with all the stuff we used. Uh, uh, all right, let's see what you guys are writing down in the chat. Um, I love your rainbow interior. Hey, thanks. It's fun. I'm loving it too. It's really cool. It'll be even cooler when I throw down some patch lines. We'll make some, add some texture or detail with the Sharpie. Um, awesome. Almost no snow, Janice. Got that's that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Janice likes deep blue and purple. It's awesome. I just happen to have a purple varsity pen right here. Just just for Janice, we're gonna throw down some purple. What do you think, Janice? Should we do it? Let's just throw down some of this purple pilot varsity. Pal, hey pal, let's hey pal, let's play with some purple varsity. Pilot pens, perhaps. I love I love alliteration. Here we go. Let's throw down some purple. I don't know where. Where should we do some? I want to leave a lot of white space there. Hmm. Um. All right, my brain's saying just to dab a little bit here, and I'm gonna bleed it so you can see it. Where did my brush go? Here it is. Over by my teacup. Retro's in the house, guys. I'm using them. Um, got the retro cup happening. Sketch hat. With our friend Retro. Now I have a real a real pup. In the other room. Whoa, that looks brown. What the heck? That does not look purple. That's because I hit the purple with the orange. It's just turning it to brown. All right, let's, let's throw it up here where it's, we'll see it better. And also the water is kind of dirty. There you go, you can see it now. So that's the purple. Ta-da, we got some purple. We got some purple in the house. The man's losing his mind. Singing about purple. Um, yes, we're living on the edge tonight. Yeah, loose cannon. That's a that's a great way to describe what's happening here. Becky says Prismacolor pencils are the best. Yeah, Becky knows. Becky knows what she's talking about. Becky says turquoise, lime green, purple, and magenta. Awesome. Um, whenever I hear lime green, I love lime green. I'm looking around. 
I have I have my electric line here. I have this is the precious ink from 2015 that's no longer made by Lamy. This color I think was called electric. Maybe electric line. For Becky's birthday, we're gonna use some of it on here. All right, Becky, here we go. Happy birthday. Dipping into the reserves. Oh. All in the name of art. I have used this on, you guys know my city in the tree paintings? City in the tree? Tree in the city paintings. Um, I think Linda has, has one of them. This color was definitely used on those trees. I don't know if it's showing as lime on your screen, but it has a kind of a limey thing going on. So there you go, Becky, we got some lime for you. Yay, Retro, yeah! Sketch happened, said Retro, he did. I, was, I, thought this was, um, I thought this was kind of fun, this idea. I really wanted to take Retro further, the character, and do a lot more sketches. So we did the Whistling Cowboy with Retro. Um, but I always imagined this, he could have his own. I mean, the Whistling Cowboy could have their own like, storybook. That would be cool. What else? Ta-da, purple. Linda says, Lime Green, your absolute favorite. Linda loves Lime Green also. Well, there you go. For Linda and Becky, we have lime, some Lime Green happening. And I'm not liming about that. It's right here. Got it? Liming. Lying. Light it. Back on the shelf. All right. Zoom. Oh, you want me to zoom? Okay. You got it. Here, I'm zooming. We'll zoom in for you guys. Let me sip, sip some more tea here. It's good. It has elderberry. This is Bigelow tea. Elderberry tea. I love. I'm loving elderberry. It's supposed to really be um, help you with preventing like getting colds and stuff. Cool man. I do have a tree painting front and center art room. Thank you, Linda. I know you do, and I love that you do. It's in a great, great home with an amazing family. That makes me happy. Um. That's so cool. You know, if, if it's ever looking for a partner, a roommate, I have I have another one here. Ta-da, we have this one right here. Here you can see the lime green, probably better. This is mixed with a few different types of greens, but you have the lime green happening. Or is that yellow? That's yellow, actually. The lime green is in here. Ta-da. Immune system, thank you. Is that what it was? Immune, immune system. Obvious work, Jason. Thanks, guys. All right, around for seven more minutes. Let's. I think I could throw down some Sharpie. Let's just button these up a little bit. Oh, jeez. Uh, here's a pro tip: when you're putting your caps on your pens, make sure you actually put the point of the pen inside the cap. Otherwise, you might miss and jab yourself with the pen, like I just did. That is a bonus tip for you guys for hanging out so long. Uh -huh. Free of charge. All right. Let's move that stuff around. I know I'm all over the place, but I have, here's a quick show and tell. Um, this is a, um, I didn't design this, but I, print, I printed it, 3D printed it here, my printer. It's meant for kitchen utensils, but I'm just throwing down some pens on or some pens on here. Kind of cool. All right, let's do some sketching. I'm gonna go into silent mode for a few minutes. Wish me luck. I said you might have to PM me on the price. Oh, Linda, we'll talk. We'll talk. Um, all right, guys. When you, get, when you don't see my head on the camera, I'm in focus mode. Or you might just see the top of my head. 
I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. There. Lot of these kind of ribs happening. I like this music. It's groovy. Let's pull down some of these lines here on the, the column. I want to really pull this edge out because it's kind of close to us. Um, I'm actually going to break out. I think I'm going to use a Tombow marker to make it really dark, but that's okay. So I'm going to use a Tombow brush pen. That's two sides. We'll use the brush. We'll use the brush side. So you can see, I just I pulled this edge out a little bit. I want it to be pure closer. So I, I folded it up. It, it actually can be even bolder now that I'm looking at it on screen. There we go. I kind of like... I don't know if you noticed, but when I since I bolded the outline, these I mean I'm actually gonna bold this in a little bit too. It's gonna frame this by just darkening that edge, darkening this up, then make it frame like what's happening inside our perspective view here. Just a little tip. Actually, we'll use uh, we'll use the brush pen. We'll do this side also. Digging this music, guys. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. Notice. Just want you to notice that I'm not drawing this line here solid and continuous, like a hard edge. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Look at the scrap paper. You think I have scrap paper? No, I do. No. There we go. Scrap paper. All right. So I am not, I'm not drawing that edge like this. I'm drawing it more like this big difference, right? This one here keeps the loose sketchy style. I really like this one here for me is more um, technical and precise. So in this case, we'll give this one an X. We'll go with this one. And that's something I talk about in my workshops. Um, 
how lines, different line types can tell different stories, convey different feelings. So I'm going to finish this one here. So that's why you'll notice I'm lifting my pen up a little bit. I'm squiggling my hand a little bit. There you go. So let me zoom out. And then you can kind of see now how this, these two lines are framing what's in there. At least that's the idea. Sharpie equals details. Uh, purple. Linda says purple. You love purple. Awesome. So I hope you enjoy. We threw down some purple on here. Hey, Jethro says groovy. I think it is groovy. The music and this. This is going groovy. Um, add in and add some Barbie pink. So we have Barbie pink on here. We have one, two. There's a little in here, it's hard to see. Three, four, right here. And then here, I have added five places. Usually I'll do only three. So I'm glad that you caught that. Linda H over on YouTube. You guys are awesome, great comments tonight. Did I miss anything? Let me know if I missed any important comments. All right, let's go back to our Sharpie and throw down some more details and zoom in. Uh, if you're just joining us, thank you so much. Uh, we're on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. YouTube broke the 600 subscribe subscriber barrier. We're at 601. So thank you guys so much. Really, really cool. My goal was to hit 600 by the end of January. We're there. Awesome. My next goal is 1,000 subscribers by the end of February. So thank you guys for all your support. Sharing this, liking the videos, it really helps. Watching the live streams. Um, YouTube really values how much time people spend watching videos. Which is something I just recently learned. And my intention is really just to reach more people. Um, just to show that it's sketching architecture. I guess I like to say if you can scribble, you can sketch architecture. And there definitely is some truth to that. I mean, look at my lines here, very scribbly, very sketchy. But I hope you guys can still understand or it can be, it, people looking at it can see that I'm trying to create a space. You know, my perspective is, is off on this one tonight a little bit. They're usually very loose, which is fine, but I could have done a better job with the angles. But I'm cool with it. All right, let's go down to the bottom. We'll just wrap up. We're going to wrap up. It's 933. I want to show some vertical lines in here, some hatch lines, just to show there's verticality here. These are actually the back of the pews. these lines here just add another layer another layer layer of interest another layer of texture so let's go back to, to the ugly duckling stage we talked about you heard my frustrations when I first started tonight I just wasn't in the right mindset I was trying to I was focusing too much on the photograph, wanting to be perfect. That's not who I am when I sketch. And it just, it threw me off for a few minutes. So we kind of refocused, got back in the creative mindset and got past the ugly duckling phase. And I actually really, I'm really digging this uh, sketch to be honest with you. I don't think there's much more I want to do other than what I want to do. I think I need to do something up in here. I'm just showing, I'm throwing some diagonals in there because there are these are there are stained glass windows back in here. This is kind of my homage to stained glass, just some diagonals. 
you spend hours and hours and days and weeks just recreating a beautiful um, stained glass window. And I know a lot of you guys out there watching could definitely do that. I, don't, I wouldn't have the patience to draw that and paint that. So kudos to you guys. just creates a sense of depth that this edge here is kind of overhanging a little bit. That's why we're doing that. Um, what do I want to do? What do I want to do here? I'm going to do some more of those. We do, it's called cross hatching. I'm going to do this cross hatching pattern. Cross hatching really is this. Let's go in one direction and go the other direction. So that's cross. Hatch. Thing. And how appropriate is it to do some cross hatching inside a church? See how that worked? Guys, I'm feeling like we're done with this one. Break out the frame. It's gonna to be too small. I'm gonna get some bigger mats, I think. I love doing this, as you know. Um, we'll get some bigger mats so we can frame the whole thing, but here it is. Let's look at some pieces inside a little frame here. Even just look at this little piece framed. Keep it there for a minute. How cool would that be? Let's just nudge it over like this. How cool would this be as just a little framed sketch? I love it. Let's move it around. How about if we did something like this? Oops, sorry. How about like that? Um, very workable, Linda says. Awesome. Becky says, congratulations. Linda's like, whoop, Jason. Did I say that right? Whoop. Yeah. Whoop. I am. Whoop. Woohoo. Yeah, I, I just. My voice doesn't go with that. I. Um, I love that. Jason, you have. Jason, have you been to the new or redone Greek church by the World Trade Center? Janice. Awesome question. Um, I have not. I have to be honest, I have not even been to the World Trade Center um, since they opened 9-11 Park. So I need to get down there and that's on my NYC bucket list for my next visit is to go check out that whole area. That Greek church, I've seen pictures and uh, live streams of it, it's incredible. It glows at night, it's just it's spectacular. It was designed by Santiago Calatrava, uh, the same architect who did um, the Oculus building, which is right there as well. So I definitely want to get to the area. Good question. Yeah, just showing you guys, just showing you guys a trick of mine. So sometimes we do a big picture, big sketches, big paintings, but this is cool. But sometimes they're even more interesting if you zoom in on small pieces. So create larger, you could always frame smaller or crop out areas. Does that make sense? It's just something I'd like to do. Um, big time congrats, Linda says. Awesome, I don't, I don't know who you guys are congratulating, but I'm gonna congratulate them too. I think I missed something in the chat, but congratulations out there. I'm sure you did something awesome. I see Eagle Scout, Kiko Mina had joined us on Instagram. And Xavier Neff had joined as well on Insta. But I know, you know why they call it Instagram? Because people, I see people logging in on Instagram and they're gone in an instant. It's so weird. I see people log in and then it's like, 
they leave. I'm so sad. That's why they call it Instagram. They're instantly gone. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Um. All right, guys. I'm having a lot of fun. But it's time to say goodnight. Thank you so much. Let's do a zoom out. You can see. Let's look at this messy desk area. You guys want to see? Let me see how far my zoom out. I don't think I can zoom out any further. I have stuff everywhere. We got all this. And all this here. We have some ink. We had the lime ink. I'm not going to grab that. We have some water. This, this is what it took to make this tonight. It also took you guys as well. For patience, hanging with me, having fun. Without you, it probably would have ended an hour ago. You guys keep me going and I love it. Uh, Linda says, congratulating you for, oh, 600 subscribers. Thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, Janice says, thank you too. Guys, have a great, great Friday night. I'm going to try to be on every night this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, whoever just joined us on Instagram, thank you for joining us. And they're gone. It's, they see, it's, I, it just happened. They were there and they're gone. I see like a little eyeball icon and a number one will pop up then it goes to zero um, anyway i'll be on i have a busy weekend i have a big deadline i need to get done architecture real world project uh, i'll share more about that if you're interested um, later this week take care guys have a great great night keep paying it forward through positivity and creativity yeah just keep paying it forward um, yeah, good night, guys. Peace and live creatively. I'll see you soon. Hopefully tomorrow night. Take care. D-Ray, I'm, I'm going to keep waving till D-Ray makes a comment about finding the uh, finish button. So I'm going to do some awkward waving for about five minutes. I'm going to change the music while we're waiting. So I'm trying to create music on using an app not a very good musician. I don't know. I have any musical skills. I'm having fun making music. So you're listening to some of it right now. Oh, I see the button comment. I don't know if you guys like this tune. I forget what I called it. And please, Facebook, Instagram, don't flag me. Don't for copyright issues. This is, I just actually created this. I keep saying they're like copywriting me for stuff I'm making. Good night, guys. I found the buttons right there.